This is my dad. My dad passed away December 26, 2020. I need all my truckers to get on their CB and do one last thing for me. Say something along the lines of, hey, Paper Chaser. That's what my dad called himself. His name is Stancy, but he called himself Paper Chaser. Hey, Paper Chaser, it's one year in, and we're still holding in the road down here for you. Just continue to rest in peace, and we got it from here. If I could get as many truckers to do that call for me, maybe add your own gist, whatever the case may be. But if I could get enough truckers to do that for me, I'm going to put it in a video. I'm going to block my mom on TikTok for one. I'm going to put it in a video, and my parts of my Christmas gift leading up to Christmas or leading up to my dad's one year since he's been gone, I'm going to give every TikTok to my brother and to my mom. If I could just make this work, this would be the best Christmas ever. Like, I, I don't think y'all understand. So I need you all to tag your friends, your family, your uncles, your aunts, your moms, your dads, whoever is Trucker's Life in your family, tag them so that they can do that last call for me. Like, I really need that to be done. I will give you all a reaction video. I just need this to be done, guys. Help me, please, 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 please help me. Like, it's Trucker's Life, baby. And rest in peace to uh, Paper Chaser. We got it from here, bro. We got it from here, man. We uh, gonna go ahead and make these uh, deliveries for you, my man. And you know, you could just rest assured that your, you know, that your time is up. And um, just, just relax while you sitting next to the man upstairs and watching down over us rest in peace to my man paper chaser ty in the building what's going on with your little lady hello all right all right so been trying to get a been trying to get a hold of you since um well first first thing first uh my condolences to uh to you thank you uh your father uh paper uh his cb handle was uh paper chaser uh you came on tiktok and you know requested all us drivers to to give him a last call of sorts <clears throat> so my uh condolences to you um go ahead and uh introduce yourself and let everybody know who you are and where you come from hey everyone i am Ty. i am um, 24 years old um, I am from Alabama. I am an educator and I'm currently looking to go back to school to get my doctorate degree to make my dad proud because that was his last wish before he passed away. All right. All right. So, man, um, it's, um, it's hard. I, you know, I, I, I can't, I can't fathom, uh, losing, uh, a loved one and it looks like y'all two is like very close so can you uh can, can you you know tell us about your father and and uh and how he was <clears throat> okay so originally here's my backstory he's not my biological father mm -hmm. that's actually my stepfather okay. so um and my mom got married in 2020 Mm -hmm. and uh, they didn't get to see their one-year anniversary. So my dad passed away before they even could see their one-year anniversary. anniversary. But one thing about my dad, he was a loving man. Um, he never met a stranger. When I say he never met a stranger, I really mean that. Like, from the bottom of my heart, no one was a stranger to my dad. Um, he would tell it like it is, and he just going to say what it is and say what it's not. He showed me honestly what I wanted in a man and what I needed in my life as a man because when he stepped into my mom's life, my mom she waited for God to send her the man that she needed and that the man that God wanted her to have. And when I say when he came into our life, not only did he come into my mom's life, he came into my life and from day one, I really didn't even like my stepdad. I'm not gonna lie to you. And the first day I met him, I was just like, Who in the hell is this man? But he soon and quickly came in with open arms whenever I needed him, whenever I needed to talk, whatever the case may be, he was just dead. Like, it was, it was my pop. So to see him love my mom the way he loved my mom and love me the way he loved me, that's, that's really all I needed to validate that there was my dad. It doesn't matter if he was on the road or he was at home, he was going to make it happen for us. One up. thing about my dad, he 
every morning, my mom's going to get the first text message. She's, she's going to make sure she's okay and she's alive and well. Following my mom, me and my brother are going to get the next text message. Well, he's going to make sure that we are alive and well and that we are okay. And one thing about it, he did that every day. He was going to check on us every day, no matter if he was on the road or at home. Because I didn't um, live in Birmingham with my mom and my dad. So my brother is actually in North Carolina where my dad is from. And I'm, I was in Laura, Alabama. So he was going to make sure that he takes us every morning to make sure that we was okay. So just knowing that someone stepped up into my life to just simply make sure that I am the woman that I needed to be just made my life. 10 times better and it's only right that I commemorate his life and his legacy forever and always. That's what's up. Now, now you say he, how, how long has him and your mom's been, you know, been going or, you know, been going out talking? My mom and my dad, my mom and my dad dated maybe a year roughly with the estimate they dated a year um, before they actually got married. My dad knew that that was the woman that he wanted to be with. He did not waste any time before he asked my mom to marry him. So it was. It wasn't even long that that was that. He came in to do what he had to do, and yeah. Wow. So this like they they what met in twenty eighteen, twenty nineteen. Twenty. We gotta say roughly toward the beginning of twenty nineteen, and it's funny how they met. Um, my, my dad's friend came into my mom's job and was just like, "Hey, I'm, I got a man." that I think you would love. You you need to meet him. And my mom, being my mom, she was just like, mm, whatever. All right. So when they actually, my dad actually came to my mom's job looking for her, it was just like, I would say love at first sight because from that day forward, it was Donna and Sam forever and always. So it, it took that, that one friend of my dad to just set it up and everything from there was history. Now you now you said that in the beginning, you know, you you didn't have no you know no feelings for them, but you know that's that's kind of like that with 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 kids that you know that's not you know not the biological. You know what I'm saying? You you probably on the sideline like, who are you you ain't my dad, but <clears throat> it wasn't said, even a you are not my dad type thing. It was more so of, I just saw my mom. You know, by herself for so long, I was, was kind of weird. <laughs> so, so when when did you start it? I mean, you know, you you said that you started, you know, feeling for him like real quick. So, what was what was the click between you and him? He took time out to get to know me on a personal level, a personal level, not just getting to know, okay, like, this is her mom, this is her daughter. It was more so, like, I need to get to know her daughter, too, not just fall in love with the woman and then she got kids, but I don't know nothing about that, about her kids. He took time out to take me on daddy-daughter dates and, you know, just simply just getting to know me for who I am and not for what my mom says I am or what he sees me to be as of social media or whatever. He took time out of his schedule to get to know me because he accepted me because he accepted his, my mom. So that's, he took time out just to get to know me on a personal level. That's what's up, man. And and, and it's kind of odd. Well, respect. Much respect. Shout out to him for doing that. Because some, some, some quote unquote stepfathers have some ill intentions to getting to know the the mom's daughter. He ain't had none of that, right? Right. A shout out to him, man. That is what's up. So how long has he for the duration that you uh knew of him, how long how long was he was a truck driver? My dad was a truck driver for thirty plus years. Wow. He was he a owner My brother yeah, he was a owner. Of, well, no, no, no. I take that back. I think I might be telling the story. He was a lease driver. What, what would that be considered to be? Yeah, lease driver, lease lease op. Yeah, lease that's driver. what he did. Oh, okay. Did you did you go out on the road with him, any? No, I. That wasn't my thing. My mom, she went out maybe like every two or three months, but. 
don't know. I left that up to them. That wasn't for me. What you 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 don't think you you don't think you can handle you don't think you can handle it or you just don't like to travel? I just don't think I could handle it like that lifestyle. Like this, no, I don't think I could handle that lifestyle. It's not for me. I like to be at home in my bed, not to be on you know, on the road. No, that's not for me. Oh, that's yes, that's, that's even with traveling, like going out of town. At least I'll be in a hotel bed trying to sleep in a. Tr- no, that's not for me. <laughs> yeah, this this is a different uh this is a different type of beast. Not not too many people can uh can do what we do out here. And the people that think that they can do it, they they learn real quick that psh, no, this this the wrong 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 job for me, wrong job. So <laughs> so he's uh he been in the gang 30 years. Uh he met your mom through a mutual friend. Uh when your mom when your mom met him, you said it was like kind of like love at first sight, uh, and she, you said she went out on the road with him a few times. What kind of did what what kind of story she had like when she when she did go out on the road with him? She simply one thing about it, she's gonna always say that husband of mine he got road rage he got road rage he does oh I'll be sitting in the passenger side just saying Lord. Lord, I just want to make it home, Lord. Lord, that's all I want to do is make it home. But she enjoyed every bit of it. Like, every time she go out on a road, she's coming back to tell me some type of story. Oh, we went here. I, or just say we're traveling now. We're going somewhere. And she's already been to that particular state or something, you know, from being with my dad on the road. She's like, oh, yeah, because me and Stan, we, we came through here when we was on the truck. We Yeah, we, we rode through here. We came through here when we was on the truck. I remember this. So she always have some type of story when she goes to somewhere she is familiar to her. She gonna always say, "Oh my husband, oh my husband came here when we was delivering this." And so she always tried to make her journey or her traveling experience revolve around him whenever we're going out on the road just to go on vacation. That's what's up, man. What about a? Uh, oh man, that is. I'm sorry. I just, I, I just, just got in my feelings there for a second because, you know, for them, you know, for them to only be together for a short period of time, and for them to enjoy themselves, and looking towards, uh, looking towards the future or what the future could hold for them. So, what, what happened? What was, what? What was it? What was the cause? Uh, it, was, it was definitely my dad's time. It was, you know, God just called him home. We, um, on the 24th, Christmas Eve, we sat around, played cards, listened to music, danced, laughed. We had us a good time. The 25th, we got up, opened Christmas gifts, um, you know, got him everything that he wanted. My dad was. He was a griller. He was a barbecuer. Um, every weekend he was home. We gonna eat barbecue. Whether it was a uh, pork roast, a uh, pool, pool, whatever it was, we mm. were gonna eat barbecue. Wings, chicken legs, chicken breast. My daddy's gonna barbecue every weekend. It don't matter if it's hot, cold, warm, freezing. It doesn't matter. We're eating barbecue. So for Christmas, he got a, a new grill for Christmas, and it never has been used since my dad had passed away. Like. He didn't use it before he passed, and it has not been touched now. But when he got that grill, he was like a kid in the candy store, just excited. He came out, put his grill cover on. He got him a new jacket for Christmas. He put his jacket on, and it was just like, oh, yeah. He, just, he was happy. And they used to think that, like, on the 26th, we woke up, and, you know, Dad was gone. So he, if you ask me personally, God knew everything. He was aligning everything to be this way because after Dad passed, I actually had the opportunity to move back home to be closer to my mom and things of that nature. So the way my dad left us, it was it was peaceful. He was definitely at peace when he went to transition, you know, to heaven. So he was at home? I was at home. Matter of fact, one of my students, I'm a, um, like I said, I was a, I'm an educator. So one of my students 
passed away a couple of days before my dad, and it was the day of his balloon release. And I was actually going to leave my parents' house to go back to where I was staying at at the time to go to my student's balloon release to just give him his respect and pay respect to his family. And that morning we woke up. I had already packed my stuff and everything. And that morning we woke up, that was gone. And I thank God that I was at home because uh, yeah, I can only moms, imagine, yeah. you know, my mom being yeah. by herself and she calling me to bad pass and I'm trying to rush up the interstate and stuff. So, you know, God had aligned everything perfectly. So I can only be grateful that for the time that we did have him, it was perfect. I, I can't say, I mean, we did have our good days, our bad days. You know, dad, they're going to tell you about yourself regardless. If you don't want to hear it, they still going to tell you about yourself. So, even the bad days that I would consider bad days technically wasn't even bad days. It was just equipping me to be the young woman that I am now. Man. Well, again, uh, thank you for coming on and uh, sharing your, your stories and thank you for, uh, you know, and, and my condolences out to, you know, you and your moms and everything. Uh, how, how is your mom's feeling now? I mean, how, How's she doing? Um, between my mom, my brother, and I, we all, um, even extended family members, we all have our days. But um, I just thank God that our days aren't on the same day. So when I'm having my day, my mom's there to lift me up. When she's having her day, me and my brother are here to lift her up. So we all are about fifth attack for each other, but we're here to be encouragement for one another. That's what's up. Now you came on. Uh, what what made you come on TikTok to uh, to to ask for the call out? Someone else asked me that same question prior um, to this interview, and I really can't say. Um, I honestly, I wanted to say it was my dad, and it was God because I don't really can't tell you why I got the idea from. I just know. The week before school got out for Christmas, for Thanksgiving break, I said, you know, next week I'm going to get on TikTok and I'm going to do it for, I'm going to do it for Thanksgiving break because I don't think I'm going to go viral. So I need to at least give myself a month to do this, to get this done. And I was like, this is the best Christmas gift. Because one thing about myself, I don't believe in material gifts. I, I mean, you can go buy yourself a polo shirt any day. You can go buy yourself a pair of boots, a pair of shoes, any day. So my thing is, it doesn't matter whether it's a birthday, uh, Christmas, whatever. If it's involving a gift, I like to do things from the heart. And so I just think God just laid it on my heart to get that done. I said, well, TikTok making it happen for everybody else, so I'm going to see if they're going to make it happen for me. And my TikTok family did their thing. When I say I went to sleep one night, I maybe had six likes. Well, initially, when I uploaded the video, it's like the video would not upload. I, and if you go back and look at my page, I have that same video on there three times within the same hour. It would not upload. I could not see it. I couldn't go back to it. So right before I went to bed, I saw all three videos were up. So I was like, okay, I'll just let them stay up. I'm going to let TikTok do it, whatever. Got up the next morning. I went from about 400 followers to almost 2,000 followers within maybe five hours. Wow. And from there, it's just like TikTok just, well, you, everybody on TikTok just made it happen. Well, you know, TikTok, you know, I mean, I I, I have my personal feelings about the app, but but shout out, you know, shout out to everybody that, that came in and showed love and showed respect for you. Because when you reached out, when you reached out to the community of, of, of truckers and the few that came in that did the damn thing, that was so awesome of them to uh, to show their respect. That's something that's, to be honest with you, is totally missing in the industry today. But that's whole that's 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 conversation for another subject. Um, actual for, factual. <laughs> for everybody that came in and and did the damn thing for you, did did you receive any pushback? Not really. Um, everyone who did it, they did it from the bottom of their heart. 
Um, no one has given me any negative feedback. Everything was just positive, positive, positive. I even have people reaching out asking me for paper chasing, paper chasing merchandise. <laughs> and when I saw that coming, and it's lost now. Like when I say I've been scrolling for days trying to find that particular comment, it just touched my heart to know how many people my dad has brought together over a social media app. Like, I legit have people sending videos in from Germany, from London, from Alaska. I've never been to those places. Never have. And I have people sending love from places I dreamed to go to before I passed away. So it just, I don't know, it was, it's still a shocker, to be honest. Like, trying to keep up with the likes, the videos, the comments, the duets, trying to do it, do it as many people as possible. It's just, it's surreal. Honestly, oh. it really is. All right, out of out of everybody that did it for you, which which ones that you know touched you the most? Um, it's one little girl. It's one little girl, and I think her at name is like. Lele Cocker or Lele Cooker or something along those lines. I know it's Lele. We just gonna call her Lele. She was so, so, so sweet. She made me cry. Um, she was just. She said something along the lines of, um, "It's been a year since your dad has passed away." And when I found out he passed away, I didn't cry. I just prayed to see a little kid. When I say you could see in her video that no one helped this little baby. She only has three videos on TikTok. Three. Mm -hmm. None of them are, are of her doing TikTok dances. None of that. It's just genuine videos. And just know that my dad touched this little girl and this little girl don't even know my dad. And she was like, that daughter of yours, she's she sweet. I know she's sweet. And for to hear a little kid say that who doesn't even know me, that that made me cry, man. Like, just looking at our generation, being an educator, just looking at our generation that follows behind, follow behind me, because I'm young. Some days I look at it like I want to give up. Like, I, want, I really want to give up on education. But that little girl touched my heart. Like, whoever is raising her, and I hope they hear this, whoever is raising her, Kudos to you because you're you're definitely raising a star. That that girl, man, she touched my heart. So like I I really want to cry now, but I'm just gonna try to hold myself together. And there was another kid. Um, it, the kids touched my heart. Like I appreciate everybody, but the kids touched me because I had one, one little boy say he wanted to be a truck driver, and I just pray to God that. Somehow, some way, when he gets older and becomes a truck driver, I just find him to know that he, you know, he believed in himself and his dreams became real. Because if you don't believe in yourself, nobody else will. For sure. And this For baby sure. wants to be a truck driver. He doesn't probably, he probably never has been on the road, maybe. But to see trucks probably just pass by him on the interstate or just probably playing with um, 18 wheelers and he wants to do that for a living. That that makes my heart smile because I know my dad did that as a living and so the next generation could come and do it as well. So the babies, they touch my heart oh so much. And then it was um, one guy, his name is Omega something, I can't really remember. He um, His dad's birthday his dad passed on my dad's birthday. So it was like everything hit home and he was so sincere that it was just like he made me smile because he played music in his video and he was just he knew my dad was in a good you know, a good place. It's just like he knew that my dad's enjoying life. He's you know, he, he has no pain if he has no words. And it just, it simply made my heart smile. And I have not finished watching all the videos. And I think the video, the complete video is about three hours now. And I still have to go in and add about 150 more videos. All right. All so right. I'm ready to just sit down and watch every video and 
cry, laugh, smile because it's amazing. The community came out. That's what's up. All right, all right. T.Y., thank you for uh, coming on to the show. I really do appreciate it. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, Thank again, you for having me. Not a problem. Again, rest in peace to uh, Paper Chaser. We got it from here, bro. We got it from here, man. We uh, gonna go ahead and make these uh, deliveries for you, my man. And you know, you could just rest assured that your, you know, that your time is up. And um, just, just relax. Why you sitting next to the man upstairs and watching down over us? Rest in peace to my man, Paper Chaser. All right, T.Y., thank you very much. You are a citizen. Uh, anytime you want to come on and, and, and chop it up with the lockout men, you are more than welcome. And, uh, hope, thank to, you, thank and, you. and hope to hear from you again. You most definitely will. Thank you once again. All right, now you take it easy, stay safe, and uh, I'll holler at you at another time. You too, Tyler. All right, now. All right.